Hi peeps, welcome back to my little green corner. This is Mental Health Naps and my name is Kaisa and this is where we talk about mental health through smiles, not tears, by focusing in on one word and its definition to guide us through an aspect about mental health. And today the word is actually tire. Now if you noticed, I spelt it with a Y because I realized or I learned that in British English you spell it this way with a Y. There are different definitions for the word tire. I think we're all very familiar familiar with the rubber cushion of a wheel, a tire for your car, or the other definition, which is to have fatigue, to lose physical strength, to be exhausted, yada, yada, yada. Recently, I was going to a business lunch with my father and we got in our car and we backed up out of our driveway and we started out of our neighborhood and all of a sudden we hear a pop and a sizzle and the whole car gets a little lopsided. And we were like, this is not good. And my dad was like, hey, Kaisa, why don't you, you know, get out and do a 360 and see which tire, what, see what happened. So I got out, I looked, and lo and behold, we had a flat tire. I'm gonna say I'm not a car girl, never been a car girl. I don't speak any car lingo. I don't. I don't even like driving. If I can get out of it, I will. My dad was like, okay, we gotta, we gotta take care of this. Obviously, we're not going anywhere. And we didn't make it to the business lunch that day. We actually ended up rescheduling it, which was highly inconvenient. We went back home and I had a impromptu 101 how to change a tire lesson. I told my dad, hey dad, is this a parenting fail if I'm 27 and this is me learning how to change the tire for the first time? And he's like, be quiet, Kaisa. And I was like, just asking. My dad, he recently had foot surgery when this happened. Bless his heart, he can't bend over very well. So he was like, okay, Kaisa, I'm going to instruct you how to change this tire. So we got all the right tools, didn't end up having some of them, had to run over to a mechanic shop and get them and come back. And we managed to get the, the tire off and we put the dummy tire on so that way we could drive it to the mechanic shop to get the actual tire fixed. And the whole time my dad is explaining the different tools and what they're called and how to use them and like where they're stored in the car. It was like a whole on lesson that I had absolutely zero idea about. The whole day was basically eaten up by getting this tire fixed. You know, there was obviously some grumblings of like, oh, not that way, you need to do it this way. And we might've jacked it up on a hill and that wasn't smart, but like what we're gonna do. So that was a little bit of a teeter totter on all on its own. Yes, we realize this is dangerous and don't do that at home. All in all, by the time my dad and I got this tire fixed on the car, it was already evening time and we were... <laughs> <laughs> we were spent and the person we were having a business lunch with was completely understanding. At the end of the day, we just shook our heads and my dad was like, well, at least you know how to ch change a tire now, Kaisa. And I was like, yeah, lesson learned. But it got me thinking about mental health because when you have a mental illness attack, like depression or anxiety attack, a lot of the times it is happens at a very inconvenient moment. It comes in, it swoops in and you are kind of left unprepared sometimes. I know that a lot of times I am. I feel like there's different kinds of episodes when it comes to depression or anxiety. Sometimes you can feel it coming. Other times it just hits you. It kind of throws your whole day off. It is really kind of inconvenient, especially if you have plans of things that you have to do. Sometimes you find yourself able to kind of push through them, get it done haphazardly, but other times you're completely shut down. And I couldn't help but think about how we had to stop everything to take care of this tire so we could drive in the long run. Are we not kind of like the tire? When we're popped, when we're having a mental breakdown, when we're not doing well, are we taking the time to stop, take care of ourselves, allow ourselves to kind of catch up, fix whatever needs to be fixed, give ourselves a chance to breathe so that we can, in the long run, keep going, keep driving like a car. If we had just patched it up, this tire, and not like gone through all the necessary steps to fix it, we would have had the problem with the tire again. And I feel like a lot of times when it comes to mental illness, the idea is with people who don't understand or kind of with the stigma, if they allow room for the mental illness to happen, it's more of put a bandaid on, smile, say you're fine, put a mask on, you can do it, deal with that at the end of the day. In the long term, I don't think that's the healthiest way to go. It's important that we take a second to stop, to allow ourselves to feel the emotion, and then allow ourselves to practice some coping mechanism, do some self-care, give ourselves permission to say no to certain plans if they're not absolutely 100 
100% necessary. Give ourselves a break that every day things happen. Mental breakdowns happen. We get news. It hurts. We find ourselves in a situation because of external consequences or conditions. It happens. But as people, we are not statues with no emotions. It's important that we ride those emotions and that we give ourselves a break. And we don't feel guilty about giving ourselves a break to take care of ourselves. Because it's like, if you broke your arm, you're gonna go to the hospital, right? You're gonna go get that in a cast. You hurt your car or your car needs repair, you're gonna go get your car fixed so you can keep driving, right? Your mental health is literally no different. So anyway, that was my mental health takeaway from learning how to change a tire. I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope that something from this video brings you comfort. And until the next one, have a nice nap.